Hey, this is Pastor Dennis, and I just want to come and share with you a few thoughts today as we are in what is called Holy Week, or what we also could say is the most important week of all of history. And here we are on, on Wednesday. And yet, as we stop and we look at this week and all that was accomplished, the incredible promises of God that were fulfilled, the, the prophecies uh, that were given about Jesus that came to, uh, to pass in this one week, we stop and see the complete uh, substitutionary work of Christ in our redemption that has come to pass in this week. It's incredible to see what God can do in one week's time. Now, I want to encourage you before we share any more for you to go to your Bible and read over those chapters from Matthew chapter 21 through the end of Matthew and just see some of those um, incredible parables that Jesus taught during this week. Uh, some of the amazing things that he shared and even some of the prophecies um, that he revealed to us uh, and in those few verses and chapters that are there. So please take the time and read over those. But here we are on Wednesday. Um, this is an incredible day where we uh, pause and we start to have the, uh, the fulfillment uh, of this Holy Week coming to pass. It's often called uh, Spy Wednesday. Uh, this is the, the day when Judas betrays Christ and he, he, sh he goes and sells out Jesus for, for 30 pieces of silver that he was willing to go and to sell Jesus out for. But this is also an incredible day where most have believed that this is where Mary of Bethe uh, Bethany, who came and poured out the costly ointment on the feet of Jesus to show her love, her respect, her honor for this Christ also. And so let's just read a few of those verses here in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, uh, verses 1 through 16, and, and start to get a little bit of a grasp on today, and then just a word to reflect in our own lives. Matthew's Gospel, 26, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all of these sayings that he had said to his disciples, uh, they knew that after two days there would be the Passover, and so the Son of Man would be delivered to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, which is called Caiaphas, and plotting to take Jesus by trickery and to kill him. But they said, Not so during the feast, lest there be an uproar of people against us. And when Jesus was in Bethany, at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flat of very costly fragrant oil. And she poured it on his feet as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragment of, fragment of oil that might be uh, sold for a great amount of money and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you will not always have with you. For the pouring out of this fragrant oil on my body, she did this for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you that wherever this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial for her. And then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time forward, he sought opportunity to betray him. Here it is amazing. This is the, the Wednesday before the crucifixion. We have Jesus that is pouring out his heart, you might say, and sharing all these incredible truths. Yet we see the religious leaders that are in the background. They're plotting against him. We see Judas who is willing to conspire against him. And we see this woman who is willing to publicly worship him. So much is going on, and yet this is time for us to stop and to reflect in our own lives, in our own hearts. What are we willing to do for Jesus? Here, Judas thought that he was getting away with it. He was going to sell out Jesus secretly when he went to meet with those religious leaders. And then we see the woman who was willing to come publicly and worship Jesus. Here, Judas is selling out Jesus, and the woman is pouring out her heart, her love, her commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ very publicly. I want to encourage you just to stop today and look into your own lives. I'm not calling anyone a Judas by any means, but I think it's important for us all to look into our lives and what are we doing with Jesus? Are we secretly 
going behind our, his back or in a way, thinking that we can get away with things, thinking that our, we can follow him publicly but do something different secretly. Or we like this woman who didn't care who was around, didn't care who was watching, didn't care what it was going to cost her personally. She was going to go and honor him and worship him, not even knowing to the great detail of what she was doing. Here we are 2,000 years later. We're still talking about Judas, and we're still talking about Mary. We're still talking about their hearts, their actions. And I just want to encourage you, like I'm doing, taking some time today to calm down, reflect, and refresh my heart commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, publicly, but also privately. I'm spending the time with Him, making sure my heart is right. Spending the time to make sure that I'm not following Him for just my own personal benefit, but willing to worship him publicly in any way that I can, regardless of what it costs me. I want to encourage you on this day. It's often called Spy Wednesday, but may this be a part of your life of rededicating yourself to serve him for the rest of your life, because that's what really matters. A hundred years from now, my dad used to say, no one will know the difference. But here we are 2,000 years later, and we're still talking about heart decisions that were made. So as in the scope of eternity, what you do today will make a big difference. A hundred years or a thousand years from now. So let's make sure we're all following Jesus from the inside out. And on this holy week, in remembrance of the most important week of all history, let's make sure Jesus is the one that we're following after. God bless you and keep following Jesus.